Hey, hi, man. What's up? What's up, Carlos? Uh, didn't see you there. What's what good? Are you doing? What are you working on? Uh, I just wrote up some uh, client calls uh, for the day, uh, and then I'm just reviewing uh, some of the notes that I took. Okay. What's up? What, what, what's happening? Well, uh, I've been uh, listening to people talk about how they are struggling okay. to really find a niche that they're passionate about. Okay. So, what do you say to those people that are struggling? All right. So, the, the question is. What do I say to the people who are struggling to find a niche? Uh, because maybe they are struggling to find their passion, uh, correct? Yes. So that is a, a very, very common uh, thing that I'm seeing in the space. And by the way, uh, for those of, new, of you who are not new to the channel, uh, you will remember the OG uh, uh, format of the video. Uh, just, you know, my, my, uh, my confidant, Carlos, asked me questions. but. Essentially, what I say to those people is that the common advice that you are hearing in the SMA space of picking a niche that you are passionate about is completely backwards, right? Now, the first thing that I want you to consider is the fact that your, your passion and, and finding your passion and, and you know, ch you know, working on your passion is just complete BS, right? And I truly mean that. Uh, and the reason why I told you guys that is because I made that mistake myself when I started out in the entrepreneurship journey. I thought that I had to chase my passion and work on my passion every single day and that way I'll be happy. Um, the problem is the passion doesn't pay the bills, right? A lot of people think that just because they're doing something that they're passionate about, um, that you know, the, the whole life will be solved. The problem is, number one, if you do your passion, right? When you work on your passion and you make it your living, it stops being a passion. That's, that's the first thing. And then when you realize, number two is when you realize your passion doesn't yield the results that you expected it to yield, uh, it's not a passion anymore, right? Uh, you get really frustrated. And so what you need to understand is that competence breeds passion. Being really good at something and getting validation from the market, right, is what breeds passion. You know, being valid validated by your clients, by the fact that you're signing clients, by the fact that you're making money, by the fact you're hiring new people, growing your agency, that's what breeds passion. And so knowing that, what you need to understand is that when you pick your niche, you should not solely base your decision on what you're passionate about. Instead, there are three questions that I like to ask myself. Number one, and most importantly, especially if you're doing e-commerce, is there a specific product category that you buy out of pure pleasure, right? For example, me, I love tech, right? I love biohacking, I love nutrition, right? I love taking care of myself, I love self-education. That is stuff that if I'm buying something from Amazon or if I go out to buy something, uh, I never do, right? But if, if I buy from Amazon, those are the categories, the part categories that I really understand because I'm already a customer of that category. And so the reason why that is very powerful is because you can put yourself in the customer's shoes, right? And so when you not only approach clients, right? But when you also advertise for your clients, you know what those customers are triggered by because you've been on the other side of the fence, right? So ask yourself, are there specific things that you buy more than, than, than other things, right? For example, if you love makeup and you buy a ton of makeup or you love skincare, then a, 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 you know probably a really good niche is not so much music because you love music, but a, a better niche would be cosmetics, right? Because you can put yourself in the shoes of the customer, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is as entrepreneurs, we need to understand that we are filling needs in the market. We're not chasing our passions. We're not being selfish. We are helping others. We're adding value to people. Okay. So knowing that one of the questions that you need to ask yourself is how profitable is it if you turbocharge it with Facebook ads, right? There are certain niches that are not as well suited for Facebook ads as other niches. Maybe you're incredibly passionate about music, but when it comes to people buying music instruments online, there's not a massive market for it. Again, that is just an assumption. It's just an example, right? You need to ask yourself, what niches are those services better suited for? So that's the second thing. And the final and third thing, and the third question that you need to ask yourself is, what do I know a bit about or don't mind learning more about? Very important question, very different to what am I passionate about or what do I know a lot about uh, right now, right? So maybe you already know a bit about the apparel and fashion space because you already actively do a lot of research into that space. You know the different streetwear brands or you know the, the different high-end brands, right, that, that are breaking into the market. Whatever you know a bit about, that gives you an idea as to what niche you could pick. But at the same time, you have to understand that if you don't know much about uh, tech, 
or you don't know much about nutrition, right? But clearly is the winner that you should pick for uh, as a niche. And that is also completely fine. There's just an element of education. You just need to ask yourself, would you mind learning about that, right? We don't want to make it like in school where you had to learn about things that you just absolutely dreaded. Because uh, if, if you guys can remember in school when you were learning about something you really didn't want to learn, like maybe, I don't know, biology or chemistry, it was just really tough to put your head down and actually work because when, whenever you did, it was just miserable, right? And so that is the third question that you need to ask yourself instead of, you know, what am I passionate about, right? And that will solve a lot of questions regarding what niches to go down um, in the uh, SMA space, right? So that would essentially be my answer for those people who are worried maybe they're not picking their passion or, or whether there's a niche that actually suits their passion. Having said that, uh, one of the things that a lot of people I feel um, get really confused about is whether they need to go down the local business or e-commerce route. And I feel like there's been a lot of demand for the e-commerce route. If you guys are not new to my channel, you obviously know that I talk a lot about that space uh, in, in specific. Uh, and even when it comes to that space, there's a massive misconception when it comes to e-commerce. And the reason why that is, is because a lot of people, and rightfully so, because a lot of people preach it online, uh, they think that e-commerce is a niche, right? So you can either go down the local business route and then within the local business route, pick a niche within that space, right? So I'm talking maybe dentists, clinics, restaurants, whatever it is, right? But if you're going down the e-commerce route, then that is a niche of its own, right? And that is completely false. You need to understand that e-commerce and local business are two different sectors, right? And just like with local business, we've got different niches within that sector, right? So restaurants, clinics, dentists. In the e-commerce sector, it is the exact same thing, but obviously different categories, right? So if you go on Amazon and you are looking to shop something, if you go on the category section, you will see a bunch of different sections, maybe home decor, right? You'll see tech, you'll see um, education, right? You'll see uh, music, wh whatever. You'll see a bunch of, you know, apparel, fashion. You'll see a bunch of different categories. Essentially, those are e-commerce categories. Those are e-commerce sub niches, right? And so one of the things you really need to do and, and really make sure that you implement is you cannot just go down the e-commerce route. You need to make sure that you go down a specific sub niche within the e-commerce space. And the reason why I say that is because if you go down the e-commerce route, there are just way too many brands. I'm talking hundreds of thousands, if not millions of brands that are you know, possible candidates. And all people think, well, that's a good idea when it actually isn't, right? Uh, it's actually much better to narrow down because not only do you get an edge by just narrowing down and becoming an authority within that space, right? And telling people, hey, I only focus on your space, right? And so immediately in that case, your authority and your value is increased. But when you don't know what you're looking for, because there's so many options, you actually cannot find it. It's a paradox of choice. And so when you narrow down into specific sub-niche, whether it be the tech space or the fashion space or the music space, some of the categories that I spoke about uh, previously, then that actually gives you a massive edge as an agency owner and it's much easier to grow, especially as a beginner agency owner. You, can, you have that exponential curve, not only because you've narrowed down and you've increased your authority within that specific uh, sub-niche, but also because during that whole period, if you've gone down the tech space or the tech route or the tech sub-niche, right? If you've gone down that route, all the clients that you can sign are tech clients, right? And how much easier is it to sign another tech client when you've already bagged your first uh, tech client? Cure your bag. Right, so that is another uh, massive misconception that I see a lot of people make, not only, you know, chase your passion, but also, uh, you know, go to, either go down the local business route and then pick a sub within there, or then it's just the, you know, throwing yourself into the e-commerce abyss, right? Um, so that's essentially my long-winded answer to your question, Carlos. Um, guys, if you enjoyed this video, obviously drop a massive thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I hope so, the channel a ton. Um, and that keeps me motivated to keep creating these videos for you guys. Also, drop them uh, below any comments, any questions you may have on this video, and I'll be sure to check those out. If you haven't subbed to my channel, there's so much content coming out on entrepreneurship, social media marketing agency, personal development, and a ton of other topics. So if you don't wanna miss any of that, go ahead and sub to my channel and hit the little bell icon. And the final thing, and I'm done plugging, if you haven't checked out my free Facebook mastermind, it's an incredible community full of like-minded people looking to scale their agency, level up in life, and it's literally where this question came from and where I'm helping out a ton of uh, people in the SME space answering their questions. Um, and so it's an incredible community full of like-minded people. If you want to join that, go ahead and check out the link in the description. Go ahead and apply. And if you're a good fit, we will let you in. And as always, guys, hope everything's going well in your agency journey, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.